Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. We gather today to on the topic, the church and relics. Before we begin and delve into it, let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. And we ask you, Lord, to come to our aid, even as we explore the possibility to understand our faith and the use of relics. We pray you, O God, deepen our faith, deepen our religion and understanding that all that we do we may explain in simplicity of heart and out of the simplicity of god be able to teach others also what we believe for all who have come and who learn teach us also to place ourselves under your feet for we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, good evening again, and we welcome ourselves to the teachings of today, which deals with the church and relics. We begin straight away by looking at the use of relics. It is, is it weird that Catholics venerate relics? Here's why we do so. I put the question in a very negative way, as some of you may want it to be put. Why would you want to call somebody's or a church like the Catholic Church's practice weird. I think that if anybody would want to begin a question like that, I would want to see such a person rather as weird. What you do not understand, you do not, you do not evaluate it, or you do not say it is weird before you understand it. Otherwise, you have made your judgment even before. You could simply ask, why do Catholics use relics rather than use words just because you do not understand? The word relic means a fragment, a portion, a remnant of a thing that once was but now is no longer. When we talk of a relic, we are talking about a fragment. Thus, we find this expression in expressions like Civil War relics, relics of the French Revolution. Obviously, today, we are not going to be focusing on mere historic relics, but would like to focus on the spiritual or sacred relics, relics of saints, relics of people who have touched the sacred and for that matter, we would like their remains be part of our worship life. Where did the Catholic tradition of venerating saints or relics come from? Now, scripture teaches that God acts through relics, especially in terms of healing. Most of the quotations that I am about to bring out will be quotations about relics where they will be used as a form of healing or bringing about life. I have said that relics are fragments of things. We shall go into it very well soon. When the corpse of a man was touched by the bones of the prophet Elijah, Elisha, in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 20 to 21, the man came back to life and rose to his feet. 
the bones of the prophet Elijah, who had died many, many years ago, when one day there were the now the Moabites raiders were coming near and they were burying a man. The Israelites were burying a man and suddenly they saw raiders coming their way. In order to hide themselves, they threw just the dead body to the tomb where Elisha had been buried many, many years. And lo and behold, the dead man came alive only because he had an encounter with the bones of Elisha. This is one of the most ancient quotations, references to the use of relics. However, would like to say that it, there is there are even more ancient ones where we are told that the people, when Moses was about to live, uh, to liberate the people of Israel from Egypt, before they left, we are told that in Exodus 13, that Moses took the bones of Joseph and carried it with them until they reached section where they would now bury. So throughout the, throughout the period when the people of Israel were wandering in the desert, they were always carrying the relics of Joseph. They were always carrying the relics of Joseph. You probably want to ask yourself, why were they going to do that? Well, your guess is as good as mine. The very reason why in many years in Christianity would like to keep the bones or artifacts that have touched people who have been connected with a saint. Not only that, a woman was healed of hemorrhage simply by touching the hem of Jesus's cloak. The woman could have touched Jesus herself. But in Matthew chapter nine, verse 20 to 22, we are told that this woman realized that if only I could touch the helm of his dress. Remember, the helm of his dress becomes a relic, a means, a vehicle by which God transmits his powers unto humankind. It is necessary that we understand that relics are relics only because God chooses them to be, to be a sign of his his healing unto humankind. The sign and wonders worked by the apostles, especially Paul, even and Peter, were so great that people would line in the street with the sick so that when Paul, when Peter walked, at least his shadow might touch them. And the shadow of Peter, when he walked by, caused healing. This is a relic. Okay. Again, when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had been touched, that had been touched by Paul or to Paul were applied to the sick, the people were healed and even evil spirits were driven out of them. Relics, relics. The use of relics is, is so important and has always been part of the church. In each of these instances, we see that the use of relics was more for healing, for evoking the presence of God, or for bringing about, for showing that there is life in God. The relic has always been a vehicle for healing or for showing the power of God. Remember, I say it is the vehicle. And when you talk about, about a vehicle, you must realize that it is a human being who sits in the vehicle to drive it. In the same way, when I say that the relic is a vehicle, I am saying that it is God who uses the vehicle to drive it around and bring about his glory. So the, to the importance of the, the, the relics is not in the relic in themselves, but in the human being that drives it. Unlike human beings or unlike today's Christian, uh, today's uh, you, uh, men and women who value the car, not the human being who sits in the car. 
but in the spiritual realm, we value that which drives the vehicle, not just the vehicle itself. So the relics are only means, vehicles by which God, God brings about his healing unto humankind. It is very important to note, however, that the healing and everything that is done is not merely because relics have power in themselves. My dear friends, if the Catholic Church promotes, talks about relics, all she is saying is that these are vehicles by which God in one time or the other has transmitted his presence, his healing, his anointing unto humankind. And for that matter, we keep them as, as the word say, relics, as reminders, not as object of worship. No, I shall talk about it very, very soon. Okay. Now, any good that comes about through a relic is God's doing. So that it is necessary for each and every one of us to be looking at relics, to be asking the question on relics from the point of view of God using his vehicle. So if you would want to question the kind of vehicle that God uses, then you are not, you, are, you must be questioning God himself, not the vehicle itself, okay? The fact that God chooses to use the relic of the saint to work healing and miracle tells us that God wants to draw attention to the saints as models and intercessors. Remember, the saints are saints not because they will believe in the communion of saints. The saints are truly with us. Again, what is the spiritual significance, therefore, of relics? I have looked at the biblical origin. And I've looked at why we use, now what is the biblical, the spiritual significance? St. Jerome says something interesting. Now I quote St. Jerome because sometimes people think that we just give explanations. These are time-tested realities and explanations. St. Jerome says that we do not worship relics. A, hey, we do not adore them. My dear friends, note the words. We do not worship relics. Two, we do not adore them for fear that we should bow down to the creature rather than the creator. So it is, it is highly abominable that any Christian should worship or should adore the relic. However, we venerate. The word venerate used in the Christian sense means high respect, not worship, not adoration. It is what? High respect. It is a vehicle. It is just like, you know, the way the chief, when the chief is moving in public, they carry his stool and the stool becomes the symbol of the chief. However, so when they, wherever, you, wherever the, 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 the stool is, you try to keep it, uh, you venerate the stool. But you, 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 you what? You, the, it is the king or the chief whom all the respect belongs to. So this is the stool that the chief sits on. The same way, the relic is only for veneration. Another word for veneration is what? High respect, not worship. No, not adoration. No. But we venerate relics of the martyrs in order, in order the better to adore him whose martyrs they are. So when we, when we venerate the relics, we adore the God of the relics or the God of, uh, of the saints. So we, we adore God who has chosen this person or that person as a vehicle. We venerate relics only for the sake of worshiping God. We venerate, we, we, we respect, we, 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 de we decorate, we use relics only for the sake of worshiping God so that it will help us in our worship of God. 
I know some people will say that, yes, Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. Why do we use, why don't we go to him straight? I think if you have that question in your mind, you would better ask the woman who said and saw Jesus passing, but said, if only I could touch his help. Why didn't the woman touch Jesus himself, but touch only the helm? And indeed, when he touched the helm, she was healed. What about the shadows of the apostles and the handkerchiefs? These are only vehicles. And it doesn't mean that they are the only ways by which God acts. They are also some of the ways by which God acts. God has many, many other ways by which he acts. And this is the beauty of the Catholic worship. We are not restricted. There is a thousand and one ways by which we can worship God. So that if a person does not worship God, as we say, if you don't go to heaven, don't blame Jesus. For indeed, everything that is needed for a person to be saved can be found in the Catholic Church. There is everything and even the more. Once again, we have relics. We have relics. If people don't use relics, fine. But Bene Kozi, there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't use, but if another person wants to use it, please, you cannot say that it is wrong. For even the scripture does not condemn that. Remember that scripture says that when a man touches, when a man touches dead body, the person becomes unclean. And yet, when the dead person touched the bones of Elisha, that person was healed. That person came alive, telling you that there is a difference between mere what superstition and use of relics. Again, the types of relics. Are all relics the same? Some people have known that there are various and different levels of relics. We can collect relics from the body of the saint. When we collect them from the body of the saint, which parts do we use? Any part of the, the saint's body is sacred and can be placed in the reliquary. A reliquary is any bottle or container that keeps the relic of a saint, okay? That's, that's, that's good, okay. Now, any and every bone may be used. In addition, flesh, hair, or sometimes blood are also used. All these can become relics. Sometimes everything from the tomb is used. Sometimes the tomb, when it is exhumed, is left intact. Now, Remember that, I think we have to remember that we have dealt with the making of saints. And we have dealt that one of the ways before a person is made um, a blessing is the exhuming of the body. So the body is assumed if it is possible. And they are experts who knowing and studying and seeing what they see, they are able to also attest and uh, confirm that such a person is a saint. And what they see for some people, sometimes their bodies are left not corrupted. Sometimes their bodies are corrupted. There are so many things that may happen. Sometimes some people's body just exude certain nice fragrance on certain days or at all times. Okay. What are the levels of relics? They are, they are various, at least, uh, various uh, three levels of what of 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 yeah. one is that relics one is that the 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 first level the first class relic are the body or frag fragrance fragments of the body of a saint such as the piece of bone or flesh so when you say that you have a first class, you have a first class um, relic. It means that that is either something that directly is on the saint, okay? Then we also have the second class relic. These are sometimes that, that a saint personally own, such as a shirt or a book or a fragment 
of these items. So any of these things can be used as what? As uh, are classified as second class relics. The third class relics are those items that a saint touched or have been touched um, or have been touched to a first or a second or a third class relic. So I can say that though for those of us in Ghana, there is a special relic that is a third class relic that uh, uh, many of us do not know. If you go to a parish, a parish, because even in Ghana, we have had one saint who has come to Ghana before. There is, is called Saint John Paul II. Saint John Paul II. When Saint John Paul II came to Ghana, he celebrated mass on the altar and that altar is still there. If you go to Star of the Sea Catholic Church, Dansuma, you will see that they have built a special uh, a small chapel-like place where they keep the altar which St. John Paul II used because it is a second class relic. When you go there, you can travel all the way and go and look at it if you are in Ghana. If you are in Europe, that I know that there are so many, yeah, there are so many places where you can find. Unfortunately, the altars of the church are not always so much open for us to be seeing what kind of relics there are in our church altars. Their altars can be built with relics or without relics. It is not by force that every altar has to be built with an with a relic of a saint. No. However, if it is possible to find the relics of a saint, it is advised, it is encouraged, it is good to use the relics of saints in altars, in the, in the consecration of altars. Okay. Now, the canon law and altar. What does the canon law and altar say about altar relics? Canon 1237 says that, first paragraph one says that, Fixed altars must be dedicated and movable altars must be dedicated or blessed according to the right prescribed in the liturgical books. What does this mean? What is a fixed altar? When we say a fixed altar, we are talking about the altar that is made of stone, of cement, of something that is, that is concrete or marble or something like that. Movable altars are those that are made of wood. And usually those altars are blessed. Hardly uh, some of them in certain cases are also dedicated, but most of the wood is. So in most churches, when you, when the church has become properly and fixed, the church will now want to have a permanent altar. And those altars, it is advised that if they can have, if they can have, um, the, 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 the relic, it is good. However, it doesn't mean that all altars have, all altars have the altar relic, as some of you think of, or, or no. No, it is not true that all Catholic altars have got relics. No. If you are able to find the relics, yes. If you cannot find it too, the altar can properly and will always be consecrated by the Bishop, okay. Paragraph two says that the ancient tradition of placing relics of martyrs or saints under a fixed altar is to be preserved according to the norms in the liturgical books. So when there are fixed altars, when there are fixed altars, usually or not, you can, if it is possible, you place inside of it the, 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 the relic of a saint, and we have looked at what relics are. The relics are simply either the first class, second class, or the third. When it is an altar, by the way, when it is an altar, we use the first class. We do not use especially third class relics for altars because altars are very, very important. Altars are very, very important. So you do not use third class um, um, uh, 
uh, relics for altars like that. Okay, good. Okay, so now, um, the now we go on. The right of dedication and blessing of altars are found in the right of dedication of the church and the altar, chapters four and six. So anybody can just type right of dedication of the church and the uh, the church or an altar, just type that and Google it, chapter four and six. It will explain to you all that can be done. So these, when the, 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 um, the relics, the relics to be used for the altar is what we call the altar stone, for the altar stone, which are usually relics of what, of things. Okay, now, what is important about some principles for using relics when it comes to altars? These are principles, liturgical principle uh, rules for governing relics in relation to altars. Number one, a, relic, a, a reliquary must not be placed on the altar or set into the table of the altar, but placed beneath the table of the altar as a design of the as the design of the altar permits. So now, when in former times, when in former times the altar stone or the relic was placed on top of the altar, today's liturgical practice says that so that people will not think that the relic will is just a mere a superstition or magic or anything, the relic must be placed not on the altar table, but at the side or at the foot of the altar, not on top. Today, most altars are now done that way, not on the top. But however, this is changing gradually. So you may find certain places where the altar is being put on top, but liturgical practice says that it is put at the foot or anywhere below the table anywhere below the table. Now, next one is the relics should be of a size sufficient for them to be recognizable as parts of human bodies. Very small relics may not be used when it is for liturgical purposes. When it is for liturgical purposes, you don't use that. When we say liturgical purposes, where it is for public viewing and things like that, you do not use a very tiny, 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 tiny relic like that. That is not to be used and it is not encouraged. Okay. Again, the relic must be authentic. Relics of doubtful authenticity may not be used. So the relics must be authentic. Nobody is to just come up and say, this is a relic. And then, for example, uh, the relic, the, the third class relic, at, um, at Star of the Sea is authenticated. It has been authenticated as a relic. It's not anybody who is saying so. This is the altar that was used by John Paul II when he visited Ghana. It is that which is used by him. Okay. When any relic are exposed for veneration, they should not be placed on the altar, on the table of the altar. So because relics are not to be venerated, are not to be adored, and they are not to be um, worshipped, you cannot have an altar and you place the altar relic, uh, the, the relic, if there are relics are being used, have been exposed for people to come and venerate. You cannot put that relic onto the altar because only the sacrament, that is the Eucharist, can be on the altar because that is God. That is what we worship. 
but altar stones and altar um altar stones and relics are, are primarily for veneration they are like it is like putting the statue of mary on the altar no 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 because the statue of mary or putting any statue at all any statue at all on any altar no you cannot do that because these are objects of what veneration but if it is the blessed sacrament you can put on the altar all relics go below by the side of the altar only fixed altars may have relics placed beneath them if if the altar usually unless for a special reason if the altar is not fixed like uh, anything that has been fixed solid concrete or stone or marble like that then you may we may not put the what you may not fix in the the the, the relics in them okay Here's where we would end, and I've, I've done a recap of uh, altars. What are what are sorry of relics? What are relics? What are relics? No one else like Joseph has ever been born. Even his bones were honored. Okay. What is a first class relic, second class relic, and a third class relic? If you want to re do further reading, you may want to read CCC eight two eight. Catechism of the Catholic Church, 828, or Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1674. These are for further reading that may help us. Thank you very much. And I shall now open the lines for questions. Hey, brothers and sisters, you may now unmute yourselves. You may unmute yourselves but please only unmute yourselves if you have a question or a contribution to be to offer. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we have the opportunity to ask our questions you may send it by the chat. You may raise your hand or you just unmute yourself and I will call you. You have the opportunity to unmute yourself and ask your question. Otherwise, send it by the chat. Otherwise, too, you can just raise your hand by the button that is below and you will be called for your questions. Thank you. Has anybody a question, please? I hope the network is not preventing anyone. Trasila. Yes, Father. Father, good evening. Good evening, Trasila. And thank you, thank you for this enlightenment. Father, please. And we normally have altars in our homes. Okay. And um, in my home, I've put this um, Blessed Mary, um, Mary's picture in the altar. And then I have uh, Jesus also the um, statue too on the altar. Okay. Please, it, according to what you said, does it mean we should not put them on the altar? Okay. That's a very good one. That's a very, very good one. Okay. Now, what I meant by altars are the altars we use in church, the okay. altar for the sacrifice of the mass okay. when I'm dealing with liturgical practices. So the okay. home altar is in fact a place where you keep items of for veneration. 
okay? So all the statues that we have are for veneration and they are not for worship. That is what a lot of people find it difficult to understand. And then they just impose on us a wrong thing. There is a difference. So you see that you have the altar that you, you have at home, which is for veneration, where you can keep your, 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 the statues and all those things and all those things on. But the altar in church is for the sacrifice. That is the big thing. That's for worship. Okay. Is that okay? When we are dealing with the saints, we are dealing with veneration. We are dealing with peer to peer. We are dealing with intercession. We are dealing with we are dealing with friend to friend. We are dealing with a prayer partner. Is that okay to worship God? So we are dealing with veneration. I am talking with my peer, with my friend, with my spiritual partner to worship God. So as I said, veneration uh, the, the relics help us. Relics help us to worship God. So they are only vehicles, just like all other uh, sacramentals are also what um, uh, vehicles. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you too, Trasila. Yeah. Any other person, please? Yeah, friends, you may always use the chat button to send in your questions. And uh, you may also want to unmute yourselves. And uh, you would only unmute yourself if you have a question or a contribution to help the many listeners who are online, who are online. I am, we are at your service, waiting for your question contribution. Please come up. We have a Y6, Y6. Uh, two thousand. Yes, Father. Thank you. Yes. yes. Uh, please. My question is um, about Saint Gennaro at Naples. Every year they celebrate. His, um, they have. Um, I don't know if I can say something like glass. Which glass is inside? Please, can you explain something about that? Say it again. A uh, Saint Gennaro at Naples. Here yes. In Italy. Yes. Uh -huh. Every year they celebrate. Um, uh, okay. I don't know if it. Yeah, uh, you know, Saint Januarius. Saint Januarius, he his blood every year during his feast day, weeks, days before, and days after. There is always the 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 blood that is uh, was good exudes a certain fragrance, which has been tested and proven. A part of what has made him a saint or made him a saint, okay? Made when we say made him a saint, helped in the declaration of him a saint. If I say if that is what made him a saint, you know that is wrong, that is not correct because he was a saint even before he died. But we only got to understand his saint that he was really a saint when these miracles were wrought in his name. So every year during his feast day. There is what the his his blood begin his, his, his blood what oozes or be, it gives what a very good and a fragrant smell. Okay, are we good? And that happens in Naples in uh, Italy. Yes, that uh, what the Italians call Napoli. Napoli. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Okay, another person has sent a message and said, thank you, Father. Oh, another person says that, Father, this is an, exp this exposition has enlightened me. Thank you both for your comments there. Okay, good. Another person says, please. Okay. Okay. Yes, there is another one saying that, Father, thank you for the teaching. We had bad net internet. Oh, sorry, you had bad internet. Okay. But if you have a question, you can, uh, you, 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 you can always share. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
let me ask a question. If you happen to touch somebody who has been de declared a saint, what would you make of your hand? Will, how would you keep your hand? Okay, it's just a funny question, but it can happen. If you happen to have greeted somebody who later became a saint, what will you do to your hand? This is a funny question I want you to try and then see whether you can answer. Okay, yes, okay. Yes, dear friends, are there questions are there that we would need clarification on saints? I believe this is where time would allow us and the questions for the day. Silence means consent. And I believe that we have understood or we will probably bring our questions at another forum where regarding the saints in the church and uh, the relics in the church, the relics are only vehicles by which God, one of the vehicles by which God manifest his presence, his healing and life. So without them, can we survive? Yes, yes we can. You can have altars without relics. Not all altars have relics and they are full altar. Please, the altar is an altar without a relic. The relic is only as a sign of communion with the other person, okay. 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 Somebody is trying to answer and says that if I touch somebody who becomes a saint, if I touch somebody who becomes a saint, does it mean my hand becomes a third class saint? Well, I thought I was asking the question, but you have asked me the question. So I put it back to you again. Ask, tell me, do you think your hand will become a third class relic. This is a question to you that you must answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Father, for this important teaching on relics. Please, where do parishes get relics? Do they buy them? Thank you very much for such a brilliant question. Number one, relics can never, never be bought. They can never, never be bought. When you get the relics from the places where they, 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 you, you, they, they, they are, for example, um, I have accompanied um, a, a priest where we have gotten a, a first class relic for one of our churches in Ghana. And I tell you, we did not buy anything. Only the, the priest who was then in Ghana made a contribution to the church there to the church there. So it is a contribution, a free, free contribution, a free, free contribution. Okay, if you if you are in Ghana or if you are wherever and you need a, a relic for an altar, for an altar or for liturgical purposes, you need to see your dean who would now approach the bishop and through him to the bishop the bishop will apply through the apostolic nuncio, who would now send the letter to wherever the relic is to be found. For example, if you desire to have the relic of St. Anthony, then the letter will be sent to Padua or Padova in Italy, where the, 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 the monks will, will arrange if there would be the possibility of getting a first class relic if we are dealing with what? If we are dealing of St. Anthony, if we are dealing with an altar, if we are dealing with any other thing or so, you may receive a second class relic or a third class relic, okay. Uh, somebody asked a question, where can we see one? Um, some of our church altars, some of our church altars have got relics, have got relics, okay. If you want, I don't know, but uh, you need permission from the priest before you go 
and you need permission from the priest before you go up there. It's not any permission that is any that is big. For example, I know that at Saint Kizito Nima, where um, where we 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 the we, there was the the consecration of the altar, there was a relic that was uh, you know uh, uh, embedded in the altar. So you can go find one from there because you ask the question, where can you find it? If you are in Europe, very, very easy. Go to a Catholic church and ask respectfully and any priest will show you where to find a relic, where to find a relic. But please never try to buy a relic. That is known as a sin called simony. It is a very big, big sin called simony. It is a big sin where you try to buy spiritual things like that. It is not to be sold, not at all. Okay, good. Okay, so this is where we'll come to for today. And I thank you all for making time. And I'm sure very soon you, you open your eyes and see, find out from your priest if the altar in your church has got a relic and whose relic is in that altar, how does it affect or how does it relate to your church? These are questions that as Catholics, you must ask yourself and be convinced that using of relics is nothing magical. It is nothing superstitious. However, it is just looking and using the vehicles that God uses to heal and manifest his presence. Amen. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, we bless you for this day. We thank you for our lives. And we ask you, Lord, to teach us day by day that we may live the life of holiness, that one day we may be with you in paradise. Grant unto us, O oh God, those who seek you in a very special way, those who seek the fruit of the womb, those whom you have made recently mothers, those whom you have given the gift of birth, those who seek to know you, to love you and serve you, all those who lie on their sick bed, those who have asked for special favors, those that we have ministered in this year and the month of missions. Lord, for all these, we place them at your altar. For you are God and you are good, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless and keep you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us be me Thanks be to God. Thank you for making time again. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen.